Hi everybody, you've got your economics nailed. You're happy with everything you've learned in the classroom, you've revised it, clear it's in your head, happy days, but you're struggling to translate that into excellent writing in your essays. You keep getting feedback which says lacking detail or too vague, and it's frustrating you. This video is to help you write well in economics, a very, very important video, therefore. So I've said how to write an amazing paragraph. Now this might translate into a paragraph, it might be two paragraphs, whatever, it depends on how you write and your writing style. But this is exactly what you need to write well. Now in economics there are lots of different points, aren't there? Points on the one hand, points for, points against, lots of different times you need to learn lists in economics, absolutely. But when it comes to writing essays, those lists, those points, need to be translated into detailed, chunky writing. How on earth do you do that? Well, I'm going to give you this basic structure here, which is great to follow and very, very powerful if you do. But I'm going to take one example. Let's assume you have a question. Discuss the costs and benefits of economic growth to an economy. Something as simple as that. You have a list of costs. You know what they are. You have a list of benefits. You know what they are. You know the basic structure of an essay. Great, because you've watched some of my previous videos. Wonderful. But you don't know how to translate some of those points into detailed writing. I'm going to theme this video using the fiscal dividend benefit of economic growth. Right? So economic growth it becomes generates fiscal surplus for a government, generates tax revenues, improves government finances, that basic point. I'm going to use that for everything here and tell you how that one simple point can be converted into a wonderful, wonderful detailed paragraph or slightly more. So, the way to do it is to start with that basic point, right? So for this question, you have a list of benefits, here's one. Start by making that basic point. So an increase in economic growth can generate a fiscal dividend for the government. Keep that simple, you make your point. Then you explain why that point has come about. We call that a cause, right? So you'd say, well, this occurs because with higher economic growth, there is going to be greater income tax revenue collection, there is going to be greater corporation tax revenue collection, there is going to be greater sales tax revenue collection, uh, or greater VAT revenue collection. Absolutely, you make that very clear. Hence, the government receives a benefit, a budget benefit, a fiscal benefit there. <clears throat> but once you've done your point and then your cause, you need to focus on a consequence. Here's where you really answer the question. The question is about, on this side of the question anyway, about benefits of economic growth to an economy. So why is a fiscal dividend for the government actually a benefit? In your consequence you say, well as a consequence of the government gaining extra revenues, they can then spend it on key things in the economy like infrastructure, like public goods, like healthcare, education, like welfare. All these very important expenditures can then be financed. That's where you focus your, your attention. And you do all of that, your point, cause and consequence, with chains of analysis. In your head, I always tell my students, assume the examiner is a non-economist, a graduate in history or something, doesn't have a clue about economics. What's that going to force you to do, the student? It's going to force you to write in minute detail, making no assumptions of the examiner at all. You're going to write so that somebody that has no clue about economics understands everything you're saying. With that in mind, you're going to do well, you're going to write in chains of analysis through your point, cause and consequence. So an example of that is in your cause, you're not just going to, you're not just going to say, well, income tax revenues go up, corporation tax revenues go up, etc. You're going to explain why. Why do income tax revenues go up? Link it to jobs, link it to uh, higher incomes generally for all in the economy when there is greater growth and higher salaries, things like that. Why do VAT receipts go up? More consumption in the economy. Why? Because there are more incomes in the economy, etc with higher real disposable incomes, higher propensity to consume, etc, etc. So you explain everything, the chains of analysis. That should be infiltrating your paragraph all the time. But it's also important you use examples and evidence every time you're making a point. Now, sometimes <clears throat> the examples and the evidence you can use will be in the extract material in your exam paper. Sometimes it won't. Not for every minute point can you expect something in the exam paper. That's where your own reading and your own knowledge is vitally important. More and more nowadays, examiners are expecting examples and evidence all the time, no matter what point you're looking to make. They want examples of that. So examples here could be of different African countries you may know, who through the export of commodities, primary commodities, and higher economic growth generate um, fiscal dividend for the government, and that revenue can be used to spend on key things in the economy. 
Um, so you think about Zambia, uh, Zambia is a great example actually of how uh, development has prospered. Infrastructure spending, for example, healthcare spending, education spending has prospered as a result of the fiscal dividend through economic growth. So you can use that as an example perhaps, absolutely. But you also, crucially guys, need to evaluate. Now whether you do that at the end of one paragraph or whether you do a separate paragraph depends on the detail you want to talk about in this evaluation here. And remember what evaluation is. Watch my video on evaluation and the four different ways to evaluate uh, for you to understand how to evaluate here. But remember, it's weighing up your points, it's considering short-run, long-run impacts, it's considering winners and losers, it's considering um, the assumptions you might have made in your theory that may not hold in the real world, right? So here you might say, look, <clears throat> it should generate a fiscal dividend, but it won't because some of the assumptions we've held may not actually hold, such as governments may be corrupt. We've assumed that they're not corrupt. They're going to collect tax efficiently and spend on key areas in the economy efficiently. What if they're corrupt? They may pocket it themselves. What if the governments are not efficient at collecting tax? Go back to Zambia. The Zambian government is very poor at collecting taxes. Big issue. What if large companies evade tax? That limits the corporation tax benefit that we've talked about. Good point. What if income tax is self-declared and people therefore uh, avoid paying tax? India is a good example of that. Uh, the Indian income tax system is a self-declaration system. A lot of people declare their incomes lower than the threshold needed to pay tax. They do that because they know they're not going to be caught. So again, that limits the income tax revenue benefit you've talked about. Right? So you can question all these things. That's all evaluation, absolutely. One type of evaluation. But you're looking to do that every time you make a point, whether it's on the one hand or on the other hand. Evaluation throughout your answer is going to be a good thing. So this all constitutes basically very, very good chunky writing when you know a point and you want to develop it. Absolutely. If you're looking at drawing a diagram, it's the same kind of approach. Just generally, any time you write, focus on this and you'll do very, very well. The only way you know it's going to happen is if you practice. Practice, practice, write it, hand it to your teacher, get better at it, get more confident in yourself, in it, you'll realise the difference and the detail. Then you can smash your exams and hit big marks that examiners want. This is what examiners want. You now know you're going to do it, you're going to do well. Thank you so much guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.